Hi guys, welcome to another review. Yes, sir. Welcome to my picks here. Ian's first pick. The Howling. 80s horror fan, uh, fan of the channel there, uh, asked That's if right. we can review this one. And since you just did Silver Bullet, uh, why not, uh, you know, get Dang this one out of the way. And I l love this film too. That's it's great. Uh, it's a great, it's probably my third uh, favorite werewolf film uh, behind uh, Silver Bullet and the American Werewolf in London. Okay. But uh, yeah, I got to show this quick there. It's my only tattoo, guys. His only tattoo, and he's my got only the tattoo, Halloween. like, uh, what's well, this cover here? That's the DVD cover. When I was younger, I was, I was like really thinking of what to get. You know, sorry guys for showing this hairy back. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the. You can see it there. That's the cover there. Um, yeah, so I uh, got the cover of the Howling. That's my only tattoo. So it was kind of funny when the guy, uh, 80s horror fan, asked if I could review this. It's like yeah. um, it makes sense, you know. Uh, and it's probably one I would review very, very shortly. But right after your werewolf pick, get in, a, get in another werewolf uh, movie in there. Right. And, and it just so happens it's the only film I've ever got a tattoo of, you know. So, <laughs> so it's uh, funny. It's a, it's a perfect suggestion. And, I'm and it's, also, it's it. also funny, too, that you have a tattoo of this movie. And I not know. like Halloween or well, anything, you know. Like, because, like, everyone has Michael Myers or Jason on yeah. it. You know, like, the, all the you big guys. You want something different. Yeah, it's something different. And I like the concept of, like, something ripping out of your body. Yeah. So you can kind of see the face and the nails, you know, under the skin. I just, yeah, I was young. I was, what, 16, 17 when yeah, I got Yeah, about that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, so it's been a long time I've had this thing, Frig. But I never got another one after that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a great little uh, freaking low-budget movie. $1 million budget, pretty much. It made uh, just under $18 million, uh, back in 1981, which is always... It's always good, because you always got to calculate that yeah, money like, difference, eh? Like, especially, like, it was almost 40 years. So, like, say, like, three times, you know? So, yeah. say, nowadays, it would be a $3 million budget, and it would make, like, 40, $54 million, like... Yeah. It's crazy when you start like, but but you always have the fluctuation of ticket sales. You have to keep yeah. it in mind. So like I mean, now to go to, to, now to, go to a movie, exactly. it's like twenty bucks. Yeah, like twenty bucks. So imagine yeah. back then it was like a dollar or so. Like, but it's so it's always it's always tr uh, hard to try to figure out the exact numbers of a, a pretty a decent hit back in the early eighties or seventies. You know, when you have to calculate mm -hmm. the difference in ticket sales and that's right and all that nonsense. But yeah, it's still an excellent little hit. And directed by Joe Dante, one of our favorites. We've already uh, yep. reviewed the Burbs, one the Burbs, of our favorites. the Gremlins one and two. We never, I don't well, think well, we, we haven't done them. We haven't yet, done but, them, but uh, uh, that's what he's yeah. He's Matt, Matt and Nate, one right. of my favorite. I mean, the guy makes uh, tons of good uh, good films. There are uh, even uh, his less popular ones I've always enjoyed. And uh, it's got a freaking decent cast for, uh, no, you know, for real, like yeah. a, a lot of unknowns maybe at that time, but uh, a lot of them um, yeah. played in uh, the Joe Dante films later on. Uh, that's it. Like uh, Dick Miller, he has a little scene in here at the that's bookstore. Right. And, he owns the uh, book, he books, bookstore, he also has the Burbs, he plays in both Gremlins. Yeah, I uh -huh. uh, and... Um, and I think Matinee too, and uh, same with uh, Robert Picardo. Who yeah, plays Gremlins Eddie. too. Gremlins Part Two, I think he's yeah. in. Uh, I think he's in Matinee as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I, they're both in the Burbs as the garbage. Yeah, they yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it. They're both in the Burbs. I'm not picking up that garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Those two actors are great, man. You know, like I would, I would love to have a film, like, yeah, make a film it. with those. You know, <laughs> have them just as my garbage truck guys. Yeah, that's I mean, it. Uh, yeah, fucking right. But yeah, but of course, um, Robert Picardo has a, a bigger role in this film than that's right, Dick yeah. uh, Miller does. He plays, he plays Eddie, like Eddie, yeah, the main yeah. uh, werewolf there. And of course, uh, one of my favorite actresses from this time, D. Wallace. Yeah, so good. Cujo. Uh, Cujo. E.T. E.T., of course. It's so that's her most movie. famous movie, I think. And, e. uh, yeah, yeah, of course, for sure. Uh, Cujo is up there, too. The Howling's uh, a big one for her, but the uh, Frighteners, too, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Christopher Stone, the other actor in this uh, that was, film. Yeah, that's her husband. That, that was her husband. He died in like 95. 95, of 95 heart yeah. And yeah, I think if um, if I'm not mistaken, Frighteners is the last film where she's credited uh, D. Wallace Stone. She, okay. She's using his, his, his name. last name uh, for like 10 years or whatever. They were engaged during this movie. During this film. Yeah. And got married. And Cujo too, they played together. They're in, yeah, she's, sleep, she's cheating on her husband with her yeah, that's, real husband. <laughs> with her real husband. husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, no, he's getting this film too, you know. I, I yeah, like that's him. it. Uh, he's a good, decent actor for, you know, like, uh, for the films and I've let's seen. Let's not forget in. the legend himself, Carradine. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you thought I was yeah. going to say? Yeah, I'm like, what legend? What legend? Yeah. <laughs> well, John Carradine, for sure. A yeah. smaller role. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of uh, townspeople, even Slim Pickens, uh, yeah. when we get over to the town. I mean, yeah, it's got a, a really uh, decent cast uh, all around. Uh, you've seen them in many films, but you may not remember their names yeah. type of thing. But, uh, yeah, that's why you watch our uh, reviews. We, we try to fill you in. <laughs> so, yeah, getting into the, the film here. Um, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention too is uh, Rob Bottin does the makeup effects. 
and the 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 pulsating like the the that is so changing. good that it's, is so good man at the time though like it's it's one million dollar budget bro the, that the, hand the hand when the girl cuts yeah, out the yeah, girl's hand it goes hand, back to, it goes like, back to normal human. it's like pulsating bro but, that's but so the pulsating good. is the big thing like that was like yeah. never seen before it's like some robotic uh, mechanisms under Guaranteed the Guaranteed that's the, why the he was used effects. for uh, the thing after. But you see above, like when Eddie is changing uh, yeah. later on, you know, in front of D. Wallace, it's like a three minute scene. Do you, yeah. you realize how long that goes on? <laughs> it's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. But I, I mean, it looks great. I want to give you a piece great. of my mind, Karen. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's great. He's so you, you wouldn't even recognize him because he's a bald guy in real life. Yeah, that's and he's a long wig in here and, and he's like decomposing and, and he's a werewolf. But same like a silver bullet, like the, when it's full on the werewolf, yeah. it's not the greatest makeup. No, effect, that's it. But I still like the look. It's, it's okay. But like it's the It's the, the changing, the transformation. So yeah, good. So good. These movies. And this was um, 81. This was before um, American Werewolf in London. That's right. So yeah, Rob Bottin really uh, pushed the boundaries, and uh, his next gig was the, the, thing. the thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. And look at, it, look at the amazing work he did there. A much bigger uh, budget for yeah. his uh, effects too, so he's able to show exactly what he's capable of doing. He's probably honestly one of the best. I would say. Yeah, yeah. He's also man. It's not just like straight out monster movies. He's he's done movies like uh, makeup effects for like uh, Basic Instinct. Yeah. And you know that famous like ice pick uh, stabbing at the beginning. You actually see the like the pick going through the nose, the fake head, but it, you know it's the fake head looks so good. Mm. It, the pick goes right through. I mean, this guy's a genius at the uh, so makeup good. effects. Yeah, he's he's honestly, very, very, very good. Yeah, right up there with the the, the greats. Yeah, I love the atmosphere again. Um, I mean, uh, the lighting. Uh, you know, uh, there's some scenes we'll get into uh, where because of the budget constraints, you can. I tell. like a lot of them. Uh, the wood scenes there, like where the wolves are. Yeah, yeah, like, the there's lighting, like a fog, the yeah, lighting, the yeah, trees. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, really well lit. I like it a lot. So yeah, let's get into the the film there. The, we get an the opening title sequence, but it's like a like a TV static. Yeah. Uh, you hear some like uh, voices of the characters in the film. Uh, some of the lines I think are are like uh, some of the lines in the film, but they're like being recorded quick, and you can't really make it make it out too clearly. But yeah, I've always enjoyed like just the opening. It's uh, it's pretty cool with the TV static and all that. And now um, we see like Robert Picardo there playing uh, Eddie. He's watching the news. That's and right. He's looking all sweaty in bed there. <laughs> he's licking his lips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's watching D. Wallace. Uh, he has a, th he has a, a thing for. Yeah, it, he has think. a thing for uh, D. Wallace. She's on the news. He's he's like a, on the news. They they can't. F they're trying to find this guy. He's That's like right. a, known as a serial killer. Yeah. But in reality, he's a werewolf. The mangler. Is that, is that what they're yeah, calling the him? Mangler. The mangler. So um, yeah, but he's he has a thing for uh, D. Wallace. He feels like yeah, you know, they have a connection and all that yeah, stuff. So. Uh, yeah, but this is kind of like done quickly at the beginning. You can kind of be like, uh, well, what's happening here in the first 10 minutes, you know? Because yeah. <laughs> uh, she's in the studio, he's watching the TV, and now we cut to her like walking in the laneway. That's right. And a guy stops her, you know, and, he, and he's like trying to sell her drugs or some shit like that, you know? <laughs> and she's like, Eddie? Because she's meant to go meet this guy That's somewhere. Right. Uh, he's like, no, my name's John or whatever. And she's <laughs> like, you know, she just walks away, and uh, he rec everyone recognizes her from the TV, even that That's guy right. from the laneway. That's right. But she makes her way to the the phone booth, and we see the we find out that she's wired to the I, I guess the they're studio. set up into the studio. But I think with there's the some cops, cops there, too. yeah, there's cops there too. Yeah, but this this is like really not planned out well. They have like uh, two cops driving in um, you know a car, and they're like, oh yeah, we have to you know uh, go check on that lady. Uh, it shouldn't be hard to miss. She's famous. Yeah, they're, 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 they're sending her into some manslaughter killer. But guy? that's it. Shouldn't, like, this, shouldn't this, these cops already be like staking yeah, that's out it. The, the phone booth? No, or like, for sure. Like, like following every move. Like, what do you mean? We're just gonna? Oh, we should uh, bump into her any second here. Like, yeah. What kind even of in the even in the movie too. Like uh, Bill, the guy that plays her husband. Christopher Stone. He, yeah, Christopher Stone. He's just like, well, you're sending her in there, like my wife. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and he's watching like some clips of like in, uh, recent murders. That yeah, that's done, it. And, uh, <laughs> He's like, did she see this? I mean, I'm like, <laughs> fuck, man. Uh, yeah, so it's it's like a, a crappy little operation they got going on here to catch like a real nut job. <laughs> but yeah, I like the lighting uh, when she's on the street. Uh, you got like neon lights. And yeah, all that but shit, it's all so. like uh, pornographic uh, places that you see lit up. Well, she like, sends them. Uh, yeah, well, it's he, like a yeah, dark area of Los her. Angeles of some sorts. Like, yeah, uh, there's, that's it. She's in a real like dirty part of town too. Uh, like, there should be uh, like the guys in like uh, you know unmarked uniforms. Uh, on the street, like, yeah, you know, it. watching it, you know, that she's okay every second, but like, like swat up on the roofs and shit, like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you think it'd be something like that. Oh, but also there's these uh, yellow smiley faces, so she yeah. sees it in the phone booth. That's right. So she's just waiting for his call. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's I guess there's their clan uh, markings because you see leaving later on. Uh, yeah, yeah, these little, like, I guess that's, you know, he's there when, yeah, that's it. Whatever. That's his little calling card. 
But when she's in the phone booth, there's a guy waiting outside the phone booth. That's yeah. um, Roger Corman, um, the, the old producer there, a horror <laughs> producer. Uh, they got him in there. Uh, probably because uh, I'm pretty sure Joe Dante and uh, did Piranha. It was his first film. Okay. And, um, and Roger Corman was the producer. So, I mean, they all, you know, they all Play a little part in his movie, why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, you know? they all intertwine. But, um, yeah, so he's just waiting at the, maybe, you know, to make you think that, oh, maybe that's the killer there. Yeah, and he's that's just, he's just waiting. sitting there. Yeah. But really, he, uh, Joe Dante in the commentary says that that's his, like, Rosemary's baby shot. There's, like, a similar shot where she, Rosemary goes to the phone booth and there's okay. a guy, like, out, out and she's not sure if uh, that guy's after or what kind of it's like a but that's what i'm saying like everyone steals from everyone but that's you gotta right. make the movie your own you know that's like, it that's just, it yeah, a whole different story a whole different lighting all different situations you know i mean there's only so many different camera shots you can do you know yeah, like uh it. but uh yeah it's what you do with those shots you know absolutely so uh, yeah so uh she gets the phone call from uh eddie and uh he's like you know you're, they don't understand these people, but you, you're different. Yeah, that's oh, it. You're different. He's like, once again, he's licking his lips. This guy, just, yeah. and he, you find out later that like, he's biting people, so he really wants a taste to be Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, but at, at some point when she's walking, like, uh, or whatever, in the phone booth, or, or a little after, when she's walking towards the place he tells her to, that's the, right. that little uh, nudie shop or whatever. Uh, she loses contact if like, there's some type yeah, of problem yeah, uh, yeah. with the wire and the cops can't they, you know they don't know where she is they don't well, know where that's she's because there was nobody around they that's had to go fun. looking for her like uh, so even those two uh, cops that are in the uh, car they're they're like you know roaming around the streets uh, trying to figure out right. where she went and whatnot and um yeah they, so asked, they goes, even asked like a call girl like uh direction they see uh, yeah. They, yeah she i think she says oh she went in that yeah the she store. went in that one over there yeah yeah <laughs> and uh but um yeah so she gets sent to like the the back where there's like these little private rooms it's funny though when movies. she goes in the guy's just like oh he puts the stuff yeah, on yeah, he, goes up, oh, yeah. he doesn't want to be caught dead in there but yeah it's kind of funny yeah, it's like um i'm not sure what type is it like a sex shop or is it just like yeah, a i think it's like i think it's like a sex shop where in the back you can put money in to watch porno yeah, and, it's like, weird. you know like but again it's lit well and everything yeah. so she sits down you know, she's waiting for him, and of course he walks in. Fuck, uh, it's spooky though, because that's like a projection light, and you can't yeah. see his face, just like the silhouette. And he's like, "Don't turn around," you know. Don't turn, don't he puts the quarter in the machine. <laughs> he's got the porno. Oh, going what, on. Kind, what kind of fucking video is that? Well, <laughs> the girl looks like she's like completely getting like manhandled but in the movie. But Dee Wallace is like, man, she's not nervous for her life here. You know, <laughs> he's got her like, you know, he's, she can't turn around. I'm gonna make your whole body feel good, Karen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna light that body up. I'm gonna light your body up. <laughs> But I think he's like talking about like you know biting her and infecting yeah, yeah, her and giving it. her the, the power of the werewolf, not the you know making love to her. I hope not. You know? Well, maybe he is because the that Christopher Stone scene later. Yeah, yeah, so that's, maybe it. that's what he was planning. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, but, Jesus! Uh, so he's like, um, yeah. So he backs but off. That, that's a beautiful shot, though. Eh? Like, it's creepy. He's like backs off and he's like, uh, all right, turn around, look, you know. And uh, so she's about to scream. The cops come barging in. They uh, shoot him. Yeah, the, the rookie cop just comes no. with guns blazing. <laughs> Even the old cop is like, put that fucking gun away, you know? And uh, you have to talk to, like, the sergeant a little later when everyone's there and everything. But, yeah, so you think um, Eddie is dead. They caught the serial right. killer. And she's, like, had that traumatic experience where she kind of, like, blacks out. And That's right. can't, like, uh, it's some fuzzy. PTSD, that, uh, post-traumatic stress Yeah, something uh, like syndrome, that. And, uh, and that, that, like, situation's fuzzy. She can't really remember what he looked like. But in the moment, she probably realized, like, well, he's right. a fucking creature, you know? And... And, uh, yeah, she gets glimpses, uh, throughout the, the film. She has these nightmares and everything. And, uh, she's kind of like puts the pieces back together, but that's why she gets sent to the, the psychologist. Yeah. Like doctor guy, uh, he sends her to, he's uh, like, go to my colony. He called. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we know, uh, we know what he's talking about, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, this is, oh yeah. That reporter too. Uh, that's, uh, the head of that, uh, news station. He's like practicing. There's one scene where he's practicing in the, the mirror <laughs> while, you know, uh, she's out trying to get, yeah, you know, that's uh, it. find Eddie and, uh, Christopher Stone, uh, he walks in, he's like, <laughs> he's really into his character. He's like, uh, <laughs> Later tonight, so, you know, like he's uh, practicing his lines for the news. The mangler was captured. You know, but that guy's uh, like a, he's like a game show guy back in the day. And he played in one sure, of the Gremlins as well. I, I think, think it was Gremlins one where he does the same recurring character yeah. as that reporter. So I thought I'd like mention it quick. <laughs> but yeah, he's a real doofus uh, practicing. And then Christopher uh, Stone leaves, and uh, he's like still like looking back in the mirror. He's <laughs> like so goofy, and then. Um, after she gets taken out of there, uh, she has like one of her first nightmares at home and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, her two friends um, that 
I guess they work at the news station with her. Um, they're like what? reporters. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they're like more like because she's like an anchor. She's like on the TV, yeah. and these guys are like the actual reporters that go out in the field. And because like, they go to Eddie. Yeah, they go to the Eddie's girls, house. Uh, there. The girl's name is Terry Fisher, played by Belinda Belaski, and um, uh, Chris, played by Dennis Dugan. They're they're the two people yeah. that. Uh, kind of help her out especially the guy at the end of the movie yeah that's right but after uh eddie gets caught and killed or whatever those two uh, uh reporters go to the his place yeah his place what a rundown dump eh? oh my god there's, there's, there's like a, a big fucking or... dog that almost bites her face off but, the girl but that like you know like how we we're uh, just a couple of reviews ago we we're making fun of like the the cat yeah, the throwing it. scare but this is a li- this if you're going to do a scare like this 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 makes more sense because you know, it was a low window. Maybe there's a dog out in the field. You know, give give it a good quick scare. It's not like a cat being thrown in the fucking window. Yeah, that's like it. Friday Thirteen Part Two <laughs> or Halloween Two. You know, coming out of the, th- of the trash. <laughs> this is just like a dog jumped up. You know, yeah, that's it. it. That's more of a real situation. She smacks you know? the dog in the face. <laughs> she, she, you know, she hits the dog. Down. But that, if, you know, that's a lot more, uh, better of a, a quick scare scene than a, a cat going through. The yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. like, I don't mind that, but. As they check, they keep checking his room. They find a bunch of uh, newspapers. They Paintings. find that one that drawing. Yo, that opening um, or the that drawing on there looks like the opening of John Carpenter's The Fog. You know, when he lifts above and it says John Carpenter's The Fog, and you okay. see like yeah. that the uh, water. But I, just I'm, that like cove, like that yeah, open cove. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's the same exact spot of, as uh, John Carpenter's The Fog, but uh, I should have tried to dig and uh, found some information on that. But. Uh, I didn't, you know, but uh, it kind of looks similar, you know, and, uh, but she actually goes, um, at Terry, she finds that exact spot. Yeah, later yeah, on. later on, yeah, yeah, it's in the colony. That, yeah, it's at their uh, resort colony. Yeah, that's you know, right, uh, that's right. But uh, D. Wallace doesn't know what it is, you know, mm-hmm. uh, she, because she's had such a traumatic experience. But also those two reporters bring back um, what they found to that doctor guy. Yeah, that's right. And, um, and he's like, uh, they're like Eddie Quist. Oh, they're like, oh, you found, you found out his last name. Well, he signs it right there. Yeah, he signs yeah, every he signs painting it. or whatnot. He's like, oh, you know, but it, but he was like more like shocked at like how he found the name because he's part of that colony. Yeah, that's you know? right. Like he's like, all oh, they have to do know? is a little bit more research, and they're gonna find out that this guy has like brothers and well, his brother, I, a sister. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure um, if they're like known as Quist, uh, the TC and Marsha. Yeah, because I think they're credited credited as Quist, but I don't know if they're like they need to like show well, identification. You know, like well, no, yeah. but you do find it later when she's looking through the files. Oh, oh, and yeah, she looks right. for Quist, okay. and she opens up Quist, and Marsha, and TC, and okay. Eddie. Okay, right, right, yeah, right, Yeah, so there right, is yeah. files on them okay, in so that right. doctor's office, so. so. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah, so maybe uh, the doctor's getting a bit nervous about the. Uh, yeah, that's it, that when they found the name, yeah. he's just like, that's why you, yeah, you guys got that. Yeah, they found the name. Oh, yeah, 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 he yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a bit surprised, you can tell. It, you won't, you wouldn't think anything of it at the beginning, but when you know, like, he's a werewolf. That's and, right, that's right. And that whole colony is a pack of werewolves, too, then you're like, oh, he's, like, kind of shocked that they're getting closer to you know who they were you know but that but that doctor one doesn't want the werewolves to eat, feed on humans he wants them to eat cows yeah that's right and try to progress through uh, you know civilization you know that's uh, right because he thinks civilization is advanced but they're still like uh, you know um, primitive very primitive they just want to feed and uh, but it's easy to get caught the doctor realizes that's right. and uh, you know you, yeah he's just well, trying he, to, he clearly wants his colony to grow yeah and he wants more werewolves out there that's but like it. you said he doesn't want them feeding on humans yeah yeah that's it so but um, maybe he does later on but at the moment he, he's trying to like make everyone civil and like fit in with humans and that's like, right. yeah, interact with humans feed on animals uh, make your way uh, you know through um, you know uh, like uh, everyday life with humans that's uh, right not, not looking to, to kill them all the time so this doctor guy is actually decent uh, yeah. but he's a werewolf you know so <laughs> So anyway, so he, uh, yeah, he he suggests that because uh, D. Wallace goes and talks to that guy too, and he yeah. suggests, oh, go uh, take a relaxing trip over to the relaxing uh, my ass, yeah, to the <laughs> spot, <laughs> relaxing my ass, <laughs> <It's> true, <laughs> <laughs> but um, also like uh, we see um, uh, yeah, Stone there, he tries to get intimate with uh, Wallace. That's and, right. Uh, she's like still like traumatic, uh, you know, traumatized. I mean, uh, from that. Uh, uh, situation so when he touches her he's like she gets like glimpses of eddie That's and all right. that that, that uh, night there and um so we see that uh it kind of come kind of leads into play a little later when they're um, yeah you know relaxing in the, the woods in their little resort uh cabin there <laughs> but um yeah so he tries to he tries to get close with her and um, she's like no i'm not ready yet and he's like whatever he goes to bed you know <laughs> <laughs> and then um she she's supposed to go like um 
on camera on you know on the news uh that's right you report what happened and everything and she freezes yeah she has camera. like a little breakdown where she just stops like yeah like, like okay get, get her get out of there, there yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah cut the commercial or whatever and um but then that's when she goes and talks to the doctor and he's that's like, right okay, just you know it takes some time because he's like uh, trying to pick her brain too like what happened that night and mm -hmm. she it's all fuzzy still so he wants to bring her up there because he's going to go up there. He's going to, he has like these sessions with the, these other people yeah, that are there. Yeah, town folk. Yeah, but they're, <laughs> they're all werewolves. And so, so he has her, but they, they want to know like what she knows. Yeah, and, that's right. Like, did he tell her anything? So they're did trying she to see anything? You know yeah, what I mean? Like, that's uh, it, yeah. So they're trying to like get her there to, uh, you know, uh, pretty much turn her she eventually. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if the doctor would have um, turned her, you know, because he. he even at the end when they have her you know yeah. like uh, they're like uh, john carradine is like enough with eating cows it's not uh, natural we should be eating humans yeah, yeah that's it yeah, like, leave it to carradine as is under the death like they even knock out the doctor you know they're, they're going against them and all that you know like fuck it marcia is like fuck you you know and now they're like knocking the doctor around you know they're fed up but even um <laughs> Well, I'm really jumping ahead, but even when the doctor gets shot with the silver bullet, he's like, oh, oh God, thank, God. thank God. You know, like, yeah, 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 I'm fed up with trying to, like, yeah, civilize uh, all he's these He's like, I got a silver girls. bullet in here. Oh, just get it. Yeah, you should like, do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. But, yeah, I love when they, when they actually get the, you know, it's a nice little drive up there, yeah. uh, long country roads, and uh, they get to this. It's like the uh, opening of The Shining, I think, you know, like through the yeah, mountains, little, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, you get these long, narrow roads. I love it. And, I love uh, those open shots. Secluded, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it gets me uh, right in the movie around, the, especially when they get to the, the night scenes. And the, yes, yes. Like yeah, how yeah. we were mentioning the, the fog, the, the way the woods are lit up. Yeah. Uh, even the fucking werewolf uh, transformation scenes. There's a couple, uh, mainly the the well, one after uh, the after that uh, after Bill and uh, Marsha. Yeah, get yeah. on there. It looks like an animated scene. Yeah, like, that that's the one thing that yeah. they, like kind of throws me. But uh, Joe Dante says you know budgetary uh, reasons. They, yeah, they had to go with that route. I but maybe they could have just not even put that. Yeah, it's just an odd thing, you know. They have this animated cartoon, like when they're making love <laughs> yeah, at the end. <laughs> it, it, like, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, you know throws you a little bit. But I mean, like it's just a couple seconds, mm -hmm. deal, you know. And also the first scene when uh, Bill uh, Christopher Stone gets um, a bit. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's it's leading up good when he's in the woods and all that. It looks great, and then he like hears a noise and the werewolf comes out of the bush. But it's just, it just it seems like so like slow and like. Like, it, it doesn't feel like a real werewolf attacking him, you yeah. know? But maybe it's just because Marsha wanted just to turn him there and whatnot. That's right. But even the music, is it's eerie, it's going good. And then when the werewolf comes out, it's it kind of... Like, it, it's a weird little uh, sequence of music. And then the, then when the werewolf goes away and he's, like, running back to the cabin, it, you know, it, it's all perfect again, you know? It's just that one little scene and the one little cartoon uh, love uh, animation ending scene that... That is not my favorite, but I mean, still, I love this film. Yeah, you know? it's, a, yeah it's still a great film. So when um, they get there the first night, all like the townsfolk are uh, by the beach or whatnot. Yeah, like a nice bonfire. Fire. Yeah, yeah, man, it looks nice. And that's when you first see. Uh, yeah, they're in the car. They're like, I hope there's not many crazy people there. And the first scene is John Carradine. Oh, he's like howling. Or going, he's like, I need to go. I need to burn. <laughs> He's going to end it all. I'm going to end it all. Yeah. <laughs> the doctor comes and takes him, pats him on his shoulder. Oh, no, no. No, no, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> but, but like, uh, Neil Wallace is like, what's this problem, you know? <laughs> and they're like, you know what? Because there's a, a younger woman, too, around her age that uh, is staying in the cabin nearby and trying right. to like, be friends or, uh, around that colony. And she's like, oh, he's just so old crazy, you know? Like, you know, <laughs> they always try to play it off, you know? And, um, yeah, they actually. He's looking for attention. She says. He's that, that's it exactly. Yeah. And Marsha like uh, has Marcia's the eye like for hitting Stone. On Bill there, yeah, 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 yeah. Stone. Uh... And, and uh, Stone says a few times in the movie that he, he doesn't care for meat. You know, he doesn't. Yeah, eat that's it. it. And then later when he gets bit, like her friend Terry brings her up uh, some meat and everything. He's, he's like, oh, I'm it. sorry, I, I forgot to pack the vegetables. You know, he's, he's like, like, oh, it doesn't matter. If I'm hungry enough, I'll eat it. I'll eat anything. He's fucking chowing down on that leg. He's gonna be eating humans. Fuck it. Don't, don't worry about that fucking uh, prime rib he's eating. Fuck it, he's eating fucking real ribs. Soon. <laughs> this guy, man. Yeah, so he's like a vegetarian, and then later he starts eating meat, and then, um, yeah, he, him and Marsha are like uh, full blown in love, I yeah, guess, yeah, for a little it. bit. But I guess because even um, uh, now it's Steve Wallace's turn to try to come on to Stone when they're in the cabin. That's right, that's like, right. Yeah, uh, not tonight, because this is right after he got bit and uh, he gets shot, uh, like, a, like a tetanus shot or whatever. It's like all the shots, you know. Uh, worn out he's like, and then yeah. you see the scratches on his back that uh, well uh, yeah that, yeah that's uh, later that night because uh, she she turns around she's upset that they, you know that not they're not in sync anymore 
And uh, later that night when she goes to bed, he leaves the room and he's like, you know, he just feels yeah, like yeah. a presence to go to the Marsha <laughs> in the woods. And they have that crazy werewolf love scene. You know? I, I mean, I love it. It's great and all that. It's just that animated uh, thing at the end. But uh, it's still, it's still really, uh, it's a good scene. It's, no, it's, 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 it is, it is. It's a little longer, two, three minutes. Or and they're all like howling and yeah, they, yeah. they howling sounds and the whole town folk are like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Marsha again. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh yeah but uh also um there's there's some nice scenes uh before all that where uh they're first in the cabin and she's having a nightmare sequence and she wakes up and the window's wide open and she, she looks out yeah she's hearing yeah. howling and she looks out it's lit perfect and uh yeah i'm like uh, but she rushes to bed and uh you know she, she can't sleep she goes and starts a fire and everything that's it i think we see like tc like in the woods uh looking at him <laughs> that guy looks like a werewolf even when he's not turned no like, no he looks like, like a creepy fur. bastard like yeah you know what he reminds me yeah, of a bit he reminds me of the, the the fucking crazy brother from texas chainsaw massacre oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cuts his hand. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's a psycho bastard uh, yeah, I kind of. Uh, you're not talking about Chop Top uh, from what? Uh, Texas Chainsaw oh, Massacre Part One. Oh, Part original. One, the original. Yeah, but who? you know they they pick him up, the Drifter, and he's just like fucking oh, crazy yeah, in the of car. Yeah, ah! sure, sure. He's like rubbing the blood on the wall and shit. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking about Part Two there for a second. But it kind of looks like that kind of guy. You know, it's just a grimy motherfucker, just yeah, like living true. in the forest. <laughs> Even when you go hunting after with the, they take Bill, you know, and uh, it's daytime, they're like, and they don't have any dogs. They got, we got TC. <laughs> yeah, we, he, he's like, he's roaming like a fucking, but they, all of them can probably sense no problem. And later, even uh, one of the nights, uh, D. Wallace goes walking uh, with uh, that girl that uh, kind of befriends her, but she's That's a right. werewolf that we find out later too. But we, we see like a fucking shoot up uh, carcass of a cow. Yeah. So, you know, that Completely comes into play yeah. that they're, they're feeding on animals, you know. And they and think it's coyotes. They try to play it off as it's coyotes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slim Pickens plays the sheriff. And, uh, you know, you, you think everyone's a good-hearted person in this uh, little <laughs> secluded town, but uh, they're all werewolves, you know. They, but, but you know, they're civil. You know, they're civilized. Yeah, they, they're not fucking with her or anything. So um, it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, then uh, Stone gets bit. He sees the doctor. But Wall Wallace uh, calls... Um, her friend Terry and uh, the Dennis Dugan guy there, and um, that's right. You know, she's like, hey, he got bit by a wolf, and uh, yeah, they visit like Dick Miller's. Uh, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I love to look at that bookstore. Yeah, that man. bookstore, man. Like, it's that's so a place good. I would spend yeah, some yeah, time yeah. in, man. Especially that's, yeah. the books that this guy's got, and he's yeah, got all kinds yeah. of crazy. Like he's he's got everything there, man. Like he's even got the silver bullets. Yeah, and, the silver. That's, yeah, uh, that's that's where the guy goes and uh, grabs him later. That's on. it. But his big ladder there. He's like, slide me down. He's like, slide like, me down. Yeah, I got that book. Yeah, I got. He's just like oddities and crazy stuff like that. He pulls me along, and this one, the girl's reading about like druids and shapeshifters and. Oh, that's thanks for reminding me. Is like, yeah. I don't think a lot of werewolf uh, movies mention shapeshifting, but this yeah. is, you know, that could be a whole different topic, the, you know, who we talk to, but uh, shapeshifting werewolves, you know, yeah. like that, that's what they're kind of Well, that's what, that's what Miller says is because he even gets more into detail of it because a werewolf, the common people think a werewolf changes only right. during the, the, the moonlight, you know what I mean? And that comes into play when the TC attacks uh, Terry. Yeah, during the day. When she chops, uh, yeah, that's it. It's during the day. It that's has nothing it. to do with night at all. And that's yeah. because these guys are like uh, shapeshifters. Yeah. So it's, it's a whole different, different thing they're they're be, werewolf yeah. shapeshifters is yeah, what they that, are but that's that's what they actually uh you know they're known yeah. as so it's it's a different thing uh, other than werewolfing but that's uh, right that's right but i guess maybe people just say oh no it's because their face are bubbling and they're sh shifting yeah. and you know what i mean yeah but uh yeah so uh but man i still i can't i can't say enough about those those makeup effects when they're transforming it's like it's so good especially yeah, a three so minute one where robert picardo is like transforming in front of it's uh, so good. D. It's wallace so good. the bubbling uh, the, the, the stout or the, the snout or whatever you call it the, the nail the fingernails coming out I mean it, yeah it's, uh, it's phenomenal Bravo team excellent That's really very good, good yeah. very good um, yeah so um, so only uh, her friend Terry comes down at first that's right. And she uh, she gets attacked in the cabin at daytime by, uh, well, we she, don't know. There's like little yet. smiley faces there too. There is one in that yeah. cabin as well, you're right, yeah. And she gets attacked during the daytime, but she actually is able to chop the guy's arm off. Yeah. So uh, we see later But who TC... is it? Is it TC? Yeah, TC, because it... at the end, he, at the barn, he, he's missing his oh, arm. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so it is TC, yeah, because yeah, I was... Because now you're bringing it up, I remember now that the, he, TC had the missing arm, so it makes sense. Yeah. But like when I first saw it, I wasn't sure if it was TC or later on when you see Eddie is still alive. If it's Eddie, no, Eddie has head. both arms and he's mangled up, and he hands the guy again because he doesn't know he has silver bullets in there. Yeah, that's but, it. Um, but yeah, Eddie, I Eddie is Eddie the one too. that's yeah. Eddie is the one that gets her finally, though. Eh? Like 
in the in the office. In the office, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's Eddie, Eddie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, she pours acid on him on his face. That's but, why he's always all fucked up. After. But he's still alive. Yeah, that's no, no, why he's still alive. And then the guy finishes off yeah. with the silver bullets because uh, none of the folks know that he grabs the silver bullets from Dick Miller. Yeah, that's spot. it. Because uh, Terry, after she gets attacked, fuck, uh, she goes uh, running to the doctor's office. That's where she finds the quist thing and everything. The files that, yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, she's on the phone with him. And, uh, yeah, then, she hears, comes. then the werewolf takes the files. <laughs> and, and, man, that's kind of sad, though, that, that I, I kind of forgot when I revisited this movie a couple of days ago that she dies in the, the office. Yeah, yeah, she dies. He and kills he, her. Yeah, he's got her, you know, by the neck. And uh, you yeah. think maybe, oh, you know, she'll get away or something. But no, but, 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 uh, but also, her. too, it's just like when she first comes into the thing, you see the werewolf hand coming down. Do you? There's like I, a quick glimpse of okay. the werewolf hand. So, so he's hiding know. in the room somewhere. That's true. Okay, <laughs> this yeah, big right, right. werewolf, he's like seven feet tall. Yeah. That, he's like hiding behind fuck, a cabin. He like, the file. He's like touching the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. I know. He's like, where the fuck was he hiding this whole time in that little room? <laughs> he's just chilling behind the desk. <laughs> it's good. But, uh, yeah, so he kills Terry. It's pretty sad there. And, um, but uh, her boyfriend or whatever, data reporter guy on, yeah. the, on the, the other line, he's hearing all the commotion. That's where he runs back to Miller's and gets the silver bullets. So, and he heads up there as quick as possible, but he calls the, the, the Slim Pickens uh, sheriff. And but I like that. I like it when he runs into Miller's uh, bookshop and he just grabs he the just bullets and throws the money. He's just like, hey, I'm supposed to get those appraised yeah. by a jeweler. He's like, those are real silver. He's just like, bill me. Bill me, yeah. And he runs out. <laughs> yeah. But he, maybe he left it. You left a lot of cash, though. Maybe yeah, he left that's enough. It. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, then uh, she attacked, yeah, 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 silver bullets, Wallace sees Eddie. Yeah, then now uh, D. Wallace goes to that uh, yeah, same Yeah, and this is where uh, she sees her office. friend dead. Yeah, but the I think there's like a, some type of sheet over the body. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, she sees it's Terry, and then uh, then um, the werewolf uh, Eddie. Eddie guy there, but he's... Uh, he's that's in... what he's going to do. I want to give you a piece of my mind. Yes. <laughs> he pulls the bullet up. And, and then to her. <laughs> this is where she, it's just like a... It's funny, because she has like the acid, we find out, that she yeah. pours on him after, but... She waits like the full three minutes of the transformation, you know? She's like, let's see if you're really going to turn. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here three and watch minutes, it. Three minutes, though. <laughs> I it. swear, it's like three minutes, but it, uh, it's fascinating. It's, really, it's amazing to watch, but like, fuck it. Yeah, this is that acid. And let's yeah, get, get, get out of here. Let's not wait. Fuck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so she burns some She's good. just like, uh, I have somewhere I got to be. Can you, you know, get this <laughs> process on the road? <laughs> but so she runs out of there and... Um, yeah, a couple of the townspeople uh, grab her and bring her to the barn where yeah, everyone it. is there. They're the whole all, town is there. Yeah, well, the colony, Garrity, whatever you everyone, want. Marsha, they're all that's there. Right. And that's where they had like the, the little dispute with the doctor and uh, they're fed up with his ways and, and uh, trying to preserve energy. Yeah, and all this bullshit. Humans. With, yeah, like, I just want to eat. It's not natural. You know, John like, Karen D. He's <laughs> fed up with eating cows. <laughs> So yeah, I like this ending. The the, the bar, the barn at the end, the end. It looks good. It's all shot well and everything. And that guy. Uh, I like where he shoot, I like where he shoots. Starts shooting people with the silver bullets, and they don't believe him. Silver bullets, my ass! Fucking pops oh. them in the gut. But when, uh, oh. when you, like we said, when uh, the doctor finds out, he's like, "Oh God, just shoot me!" Yeah, that's like, it. Oh my God. <laughs> Even John Carradine, I think he's you know he was uh, trying to kill himself. Is yeah, that's he can it. Only die by being burnt alive or something, and or silver bullets. I think that's it's right. the only two ways. And John, Car that's why John Carradine was trying to jump in the fire when he was like in human. <laughs> Form. He was tired of eating cows, I guess. So, yeah, I think he, yeah, yeah him too. <laughs> but even uh, him too, he's happy to be dead. I'm pretty sure. I think he's like, oh god, yes. But I like, I like the like the redneck there. He's got like a sandwich in his hand. He's leaning up against the barn. He's just like silver bullets, my ass, and he fucking gets popped. Yeah, right but in he his... just killed TC. Yeah, what, what do you mean silver bullets, my but ass? But that's what he's there. He's like silver bullets, my ass. He's like, yeah, I call your bluff, and the guy just gets popped right in the gut. Yeah. Oh. oh! And he's just but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but before he goes to the barn, he goes to the doctor's office yeah, 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 as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's uh, where he pops Eddie with the gun. And he's listening to the recording of uh, that's right. his girlfriend. I guess his girlfriend. Hey, um, and Eddie, what a sadistic girlfriend. bastard. He's like, this is my favorite part. And you hear suffering? Oh, man, it's oh. sad, man. And, uh, <laughs> but he has the gun, and he's that's like, it. here, I'm going to show you something, you know? Because like, he thinks it's just regular bullets. can't mm -hmm. be fucking shit, you know? And he's starting to shape shift. And he's like, here, take a shot, you know? And it's bubbling, even his chest is bubbling. <laughs> it's good. Oh, fuck, he shoots him twice. <laughs> oh, so I guess him in the neck, fuck. <laughs> so, fuck, he took him right out of the game. <laughs> fuck, he, she shocked his fucking ass. <laughs> then he heads over to the barn, and uh, he gets D. Wallace. He's able to kill them off. And I think he burns down the barn while they're locked in. Because uh, right. Marsha and the other ones get back into the barn. And lock Pops a couple in. of shots and Slim Pickens, too, there. Slim Pickens is at the well, yeah. in the street. But even D. Wallace <laughs> doesn't even know he's a werewolf. Yeah, she's just like, like, oh, it's, oh, it's him. You know, yeah. look at all this stuff. And he starts shooting at him. <laughs> you have to kill him off. <laughs> And, and then, then she, uh, uh, they, a werewolf bites D. Wallace on the show, and then she pops him, and you find out it's her husband in the back seat. Yeah, but uh, didn't she get bit in the barn, and we didn't see? I, I think no, she I got think, bit in the car. She, in the she, car,
Uh, I think we see Christopher uh, uh, Stone's body in the back seat, dead, right? Yeah, but because that's, I think, that werewolf that bit her. And then when she sh yeah, gets but, one shot off in the car? Yeah, man, I, 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 he, I don't know. I, I can't remember. Yeah, that he's in the, they're in the car. They're in the car. So it, w it was her husband that bit her. Yeah. And then, yeah, because uh, she transforms on the fucking ending. At and the, then he the blows news. her away. But she looks like a fucking cat when she transforms. Yeah, that, that's that's the other scene that uh, the make oh. like, you know budgetary. She fucking didn't look constraints. anything at all like a fucking werewolf. Yeah, she yeah, like a cat for not, fuck's uh, sake. It's not. They should have just stopped on the eyes and the fangs yeah. or something. But yeah, when it's like really full on coming, it, it doesn't look great there. Her her makeup effects. And she gets blown away on live television. <laughs> well, she's like, we gotta let everyone know this is yeah, real. But it. but you see people even watching it, they're like, oh, they're like, cra crazy effects, or they don't know if it's real or not. There's the news lady turning into a werewolf on TV. Yeah, like what well, special effects, you know. <laughs> fucking guy just blows her away yeah. <laughs> we have to let everyone know that's it he's like don't worry you know like he, he, he's uh, on set with her there the guy who saved her and uh but then we see marcia in, in the bar she orders yeah. uh burger rare and i've always loved the end credits uh it's just like, in on that burger uh, you know, yeah cooking like on dirty the, on the greasy grill. burger <laughs> yes yeah, the whole it's the whole ending credits it just gets closer and closer to that fucking patty on the grill <laughs> It's, I just say yeah, it's just a it's simple ending, but yeah, it's, it's, it's effective. Funny, you know? Yeah, it's funny as fuck. I've always that that ending. I've always you know it's just a goofy little ending, but it's always it. stuck in my mind. So you do things like that, and you know your movies get remembered. You know just for goofy little little reasons. But yeah, so yeah, so uh, she transforms at the end and uh, during the news broadcast and. Uh, Marsha's still alive. We find out she's that's at the right. bar in in the city. So, so uh, like technically, she's like the only one that we know of that's still around. Yeah, I'm not sure if any of, any of the mouse uh, got out. Did they ever make like a low budget cheap sequel to this? Yeah, yeah. oh my god, yeah, yeah. I think there's six or seven of them. Now. Really? Oh, bro, they're terrible. Uh, some are so bad. Well, that's so why bad. I asked because I didn't even know about them. No, uh, they're going to watch that. No, uh, they're. I mean, some of them maybe have a uh, you know some some decent scenes you know to okay. look at, but I mean, when you get to like Howling Four or Five and all this nonsense, uh, oh my god. No, it's, it's not even the. It's the like same the pumpkin heads, film. I guess. It's kind of like I mean, the crap. Joe Dante is a filmmaker. No, you know? absolutely. this guy uh, has no, no, vision. For sure. He, for sure. You know, like he's a decent filmmaker. The people that do the sequels are just uh, trying to cash in on the bucks. You know? No, like, absolutely. Anyways, uh, fuck uh, What a big uh, review. Uh, 80s horror fan. I hope you enjoyed. Take Until care, guys. Next time, guys. Bye. Bye bye. You're going to get it, bitch. Damn enchiladas!